Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters to restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and this is a very special episode. Now, as you can see, I'm going to give you a sneak preview of what uh, season two of Mormon Book Reviews book reviews is going to look like. Uh, so this is kind of the format, the new format for the second season. I do want to hear your feedback on it. But the theme of today's episode is Thanksgiving and the holiday that what it means and what it means to be thankful. And I just wanted to talk to my audience briefly about what I'm thankful for over the course of the few months that I've been doing this program, and it really has exploded. I'm talking to some of the biggest names in Mormonism, and I'm just so thankful to all my uh, viewers and subscribers. You really are awesome, and I want to thank you so much. And I also want to thank all the various guests that have been my, on my program, from Rick Bennett, who went out of his way to work with me and actually do a joint uh, production of Gospel Tangents and Mormon Book Reviews. I had only done three book reviews, and he was kind of skeptical that an evangelical was actually like a nice guy and actually wanted to have civil dialogue. And now he's like a brother from another mother. So then we got Christopher Thomas, one of the great theologians uh, in our Pentecostal theologians. And he was my first book review. And I just remember emailing him and asking him if he'd come on my program. And a few days later, he mailed me back and he said, I'm honored that my book was the very first one that was reviewed. And I thought, wow, I mean, I just have a little channel with maybe 30 subscribers, but he was honored. And he always says, nobody can take away the fact that my book was the first one reviewed. And of course, we had him on as a guest. Then I want to thank Jonathan Neville. Now, here's a guy that many people hadn't heard of outside of uh, Heartland circles. And one thing I noticed when I was watching Rod Meldrum's program when he was doing a series on the Book of Mormon last year, was I thought this guy is an original thinker, very erudite, as actually Christopher Thomas described him to me on a telephone call. And I thought, this guy has some good ideas here. He's an original thinker, and actually a very prominent person, very prominent. One of my guests told me that he's a radical thinker in the best sense of the term. So Jonathan Neville is now meeting with scholars and with people and is now being taken seriously as a result of my book review of Infinite Goodness as well as my conversations with him. Then I have Patrick McKay, whose telephone call changed the course of my channel. He uh, started telling me about Arlene Buffington and uh, her miraculous hymnal called Songs of Zion. And that's when I realized my channel was going to be more than just scholarly and secular, but also have a spiritual aspect in it as well. And there's Matt Harris, who, man, this guy, he's awesome. He's good friends with Rick Bennett, and he was friends with Christopher Thomas. So I just asked him on Facebook, because he's like, oh, this is great. You got Christopher Thomas. I said, would you like to come on? He's like, sure. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And then John Hamer from the Community of Christ, a pastor of basically one of the largest congregations in the Community of Christ because of his online services, Church Without Walls. He came on, and he's going to come back on, and, and he wrote some really neat just wonderful words of encouragement to me on my Facebook page. Um, he's really been a great uh, inspiration to me. Um, theologically, you know, we probably differ a little bit, but um, I like the the mind that he has and the original thinker that he is and his knowledge in, of the history of the Restoration is uh, par excellence. Um, I want to thank Richard Bushman for coming on my program. Um, folks, that one was, of course, a big one, but as you can see, I already was starting to get good good guests on, but Richard Bushman... Within two minutes of me meeting him at the Mormon History Association, agreed to come onto my program. And I've been told by other people that were podcasters who've asked him to his face, and they've turned him down. And so it's like, it was an honor that he came on. And uh, I could tell he enjoyed the interview. And as soon as I got off the interview, I thought, you know, if I asked him, he'd come back on. He really thoroughly enjoyed it and wrote a really nice um, email to me uh, the night that the uh, video came out, even though it had audio issues. And, of course, my friend uh, Nick Jones from Pot of Thunder uh, fixed the audio uh, on a second edition. So make sure you watch the audio fixed edition of my Richard Bushman interview. Bruce Van Orden, uh, I've retired from BYU. Uh, I'm going to be reading a W.W. Phelps book of his soon. Um, wonderful, wonderful man. At the last minute, I needed a guest. And he's on vacation in California, 7 o'clock in the morning, his time. And he says, Steve, you're my friend. I wanna, I'll come on and fill that slot. These are the, ins, the behind the scenes folks that I, that's really amazing. These wonderful people who just, I have become friends. He, Bruce tells, tells me, I'm your friend. And that meant a lot to me. And I have good old Robert from Book of Mormon Editions. 
And uh, actually, by the time this airs, my second episode with him will air. Just have this tiny little YouTube channel plucking away for about a year, year and a half, putting out videos about the individual editions of the Book of Mormon. And I thought, this is a good guy. I want to have him on my program because I'm his number one fan. And he came on and we had a wonderful interview. And then I had Eric Hansen on, who nobody's ever heard of. He's a philosopher uh, based out of Germany and a medieval scholar. And he wrote a self-published book about his faith journey. And uh, so I introduced him to an American audience. He's somewhat known in Germany. And this is the first time that he actually did an English language interview. And that was really cool. Jackson Washburn, the up-and-coming theologian, uh, headed to Harvard Divinity School, yeah, actually at Harvard Divinity School this fall. Um, he's going to start integrating the Protestant doctrine of grace in within Mormonism. He is the next generation of Mormon theologians, and it was a real honor. And by the way, he came on at the last minute, like at the very last minute, to tape an interview with me. And so that was really cool. And as I'm going through my list, I realize that I do not have... Uh, Mark Staker here. So uh, that one was really cool because Mark Staker uh, works at the Church Historian's office and um, he decided to come on my program to talk about his book about Tun Tunbridge, Tunbridge Farm and then came back later on to exclusively announce the results of the pollen study of when Joseph Smith uh, was farming the land and of course watch the video, the breaking news video where we discussed the pollen results. That was so awesome that he came on. I don't know how I missed you, Mark. I missed you on my list. And then I had Daniel Stone with the Church of Jesus Christ and talk about the Bickerton uh, biography of William Bickerton uh, associated with the Church of Jesus Christ uh, based in Monaga Hill, Pennsylvania. It was a Sunday night, 9 o'clock. We bought, I had a Red Bull and he had a coffee ready to go and we filmed for over two hours. That was my longest interview at the time. And it was so funny because I told Daniel afterwards, because he gave answers that are like 20 minutes long. And I told him, talk as long as you want. And I told him at one point, I'm looking at the screen and I realized, oh, wait, I'm not watching Gospel Tangents or Mormon Stories. This is my program. I kind of became a viewer <laughs> rather than realizing that I was actually the host of the program. He got a big kick out of that. And then I had Paul Nuremberg and Matthew Eklund um, from Outer Brightness on my program, who that was the first podcast I appeared on was with them. And they are two uh, post-Mormon individuals um, who have a podcast um, basically trying to build bridges between uh, the Restoration and Evangelicals. And they were very gracious hosts to have me come on. And then, if, and then uh, so that was really cool. Oh, and I do have Mark Staker on here. I just forgot. Yeah, so that's cool. Mark's on there. Good. Then I had Rebecca Jansen on. And I remember being, uh, she wrote the Liminal Sovereignty book. And I remember being really nervous because this is the first time I uh, would have interviewed a female millennial. And I was like, how am I going to do? It's like a completely different world. And I don't have interactions with a whole lot of millennials, which of course, except for my assistant, Anthony, who actually I think might even be younger than a millennial. But either way, long story short, um, I was really proud of that interview and really enjoyed our conversation. We talked about the colonization, the, co the colonies of uh, the Mormons and Mennonites in Mexico. So Nathan Smith comes next. Now this guy, teenage apologist for a fair Mormon. And nobody knew who he was, except for the people who are on Facebook, where they read some of his writings and stuff like that. And uh, I got so much positive feedback, um, including from family members that were really touched by the interview that I had with him, where he talked about having PTSD on the mission field. And as a result of Nathan Smith, he got to meet many of my uh, people and have reached out to him, missionaries throughout the world, ex-missionaries, uh, contacted return missionaries, contacted him and told them their stories as well. Uh, male uh, PTSD and abuse and all that is often not talked about and so that was a very important episode and that was actually partly in inspired by uh, Bruce Van Orman uh, telling me about his son's story on the uh, uh, mission field as well. Uh, Tony Fieldson from the Restoration Table. I remember it was sometime in April. I bet I had 40 something. Uh, I don't think I even had 40 subscribers. And he's got this big YouTube channel in my mind. You know, at the time he had like 600, 700 people on his YouTube channel. And I reached out to him because I saw his interview on um, Saints Unscripted. And we reached out and he became, we became friends. And he brought a lot of people, a lot of viewers and subscribers to my channel. He told him, you got to watch a Pentecostal Reads the Book of Mormon. Uh, watch that episode and you'll really like him. And so I've been a member of the Restoration Table on Facebook for a long time. And I want to shout out to Tony for all that you've uh, done. Then, of course, I have Sandra Tanner, great-great-granddaughter, Brigham Young, founder of Utah Lighthouse Ministry. And we discussed her uh, triumphant uh, 
uh, not return, but uh, acknowledgement by the Mormon History Association, uh, having her in a place of honor the, on the Thursday night uh, uh, panel where she was there with Murder Among the Mormons and, um, and, uh, and, and was in that documentary, and she was treated very well. It was like, finally, she's getting the acknowledgement that her and her husband uh, long needed, that they weren't there to bash Mormons. They just wanted people to know the history of the church. Then I've got Glenn Cole, who's uh, from the local church here, and he gave a remarkable story about an amazing uh, encounter he had at a hotel room in St. Louis. Check that out. Um, that hasn't been getting a lot of views, but it's remarkable, especially folks in the Church of Jesus Christ. I think you'll be enjoying that. Casey Griffiths, very first person I had from uh, Brigham Young University to come on my program, and he sent me the book uh, about uh, Joseph Merrill, and I was about the first person east of the Mississippi to receive that book. Thanks, everybody at BYU Press. I really appreciate you sending me more, more books. By the way, eight different publishers are sending me books now, and sometime, and I'm getting authors sending me unsolicited stuff. I want to thank uh, Mark Elwood, who came gave us the Glass Looker uh, graphic novel. Dude, you're awesome. Uh, really enjoy what you're doing. Looking forward to volume two. That was my first graphic novel, and... Uh, uh, I've been in touch with him about a few other things. I think I'd like to do some projects with him down the road. Katie Langston, uh, Lutheran minister, raised in LDS, talked about uh, her uh, background in the church and her uh, issues with uh, just legalism and then her embrace of grace within the context of the Protestant understanding of it. And uh, she gave a remarkable story. And it was at times a very, uh, very... A bold story or kind of like well, we th maybe used a little bit of language and stuff we don't normally use or at least refer to it um, but it turned out to be a fantastic interview and she was really cool and she had already she was going to reach out to me because she had been she actually watched my John Hamer interview so it was really cool um, Chris Jensen who wrote Obscure Mormon Doctrine uh, this is somebody I found online uh, on, on Reddit and Nobody ever heard of this guy. I read the book and was shocked. I thought it was written by a faithful Orthodox Mormon. Turns out he's ex-Mormon, but he wrote what I thought was a pretty good um, a detail of a basic, like an encyclopedia of Mormon doctrine, uh, which I thought was really interesting. So uh, Chris, you know, it was a great another discovery of mine. And then I had um, Colby Townsend, renowned scholar Colby Townsend, as I like to joke. That's what I called him, and he got a lot of flack on Facebook over that. But we had a fantastic conversation. Um, and he was just, he's just a cool dude, and I really appreciate him coming on my program before the semester started at IU. Uh, thanks, Colby. Uh, it was a really great interview, and I got a lot of good feedback on it. And it also showed me that I can get deep in the weeds on the theological stuff, at least a little bit, not too deep, not as deep as him. But still, it showed me I can have those kind of conversations. Um, uh, Taylor Drake, uh, interesting guy. Uh, did a lot of his original research. I had him vetted a little bit through Nathan Smith and he said, Steve, he's not a crank. He knows what he's talking about. So I said, okay, let's bring him on and talk to him. And had a really good conversation. And I actually have him in contact with other uh, guests of mine who uh, are interested in, he's looking for a church home and I'm trying to help him in that process. So Taylor, thanks again for coming on. KC Kern, awesome man. I was talking to him. He's based in South Korea and he helped edit that, um, edited it together. He put graphics in there. He did a really awesome job. He did it. We filmed that on a Wednesday I believe it was a Wednesday or a Thursday, either way. And he, and he said, I'll edit it, and I'll put pictures in it. And, and by the time you wake up next morning, because we're there 12 hours ahead of us, it will be uh, in the can. And by golly, and then he made a thumbnail for me. And so that was really cool. He, he did that edit job in just less than 24 hours, and we had it posted. And his unique uh, uh, atonement theory within the Book of Mormon is a fascinating um, hypothesis that he had. And I was glad we had that conversation. So thanks. Brent Ashworth came on. I met him at... Uh, Mormon History Association, and uh, uh, no, I didn't meet him. I met him at, um, oh, I, it, I think it's the Chuck Wagon. Oh, I always get that mixed up. So either way, it's the cafeteria place. So you get a lot of food. There's a lot of food, a lot of food. So I'm walking into the, about to be walked into the room where, by, by the host, and I some a voice said something. You're going to meet somebody, like a, an important person today, in this room. So, like, I knew before I walked in the room I was going to meet somebody. And by golly, the booth right behind me, there's Brent Ashworth. Well, by golly, he was one of the few people from uh, Murder Among the Mormons that wasn't at the MHA. So I got to meet everybody. And uh, so that was really cool. Got a photo with him. And he came on. And we're actually going to be doing a series um, where he talks about some items in his collection. So stay tuned. That will be part of my Tuesday schedule. Spanky Ward, last minute filmmaker, wrote, did the Christmas box. 
Uh, Spanky, thanks for coming to my program. That's the first time I've done a film director. I'm hoping to get Richard Dutcher on, but Spanky, I really appreciate at the last minute coming on. Uh, you're you're a good you're a good dude, and thank you for sending me um, the the Christmas box movie and the children's book that you uh, wrote. I hope to review that someday down the road. Uh, then Don Bradley interviewed him at his apartment or place of residence in uh, Utah, and he specifically went to me at the MHA and told me, and him and I were in contact since April or May, um, a lot of people think that I'm getting a lot of these guests via Richard Bushman, but actually you'd be surprised at who I was talking to even before that. And he went to me and he said, I really appreciate your project and I find it so interesting and I want to tell my story, my faith journey to you on your channel. Well, it turns out I happened to be back in September in Utah and we filmed it and I'll tell you, I got, I had somebody, I was on a, a, a a Zoom call with somebody, and they told me, they said, they watched that um, interview with Brad uh, Don Bradley, the second part especially, and he said, I was crying, I was crying, and I have a feeling that's not the only one. I kind of shed some tears during that interview as well. Then there's good old Rebecca, the little Tekka, the Lug, the Lug, the largely unknown guest who came on at the last minute, and we had this fantastic story about her life. One of the most interesting things that every single temple experience she had, something weird happened, and it was unique to tell that story. And uh, she's just part of this book club, and by the way, she was at Thrive this weekend, and she said people were talking, somebody talked to her about my channel, so I know I was discussed at the Thrive conference. Remember, I'm neutral, not taking sides, but it's just an honor to know that I'm being talked about. And Rebecca, I hope your book club explodes, but still stays intimate because it's an awesome group you got. And then we got Josh Gailey, who's an evangelist with the Church of Jesus Christ. And uh, that was my quickest video to a 1,000 views. It smashed all the records. And uh, his, it was a powerful episode. And a lot of people from the Church of Jesus Christ ended up uh, becoming um, subscribers of mine. I can tell, sometimes I know who subscribes. They'll let you know. or the, and, and often when I'd see an Italian name, I'd be like, that's Church of Jesus Christ. Uh, Josh, that was a fascinating interview we had. Benjamin uh, Schaefer, here I have a polygamist. I run into him at a conference. I'm out at Utah, and I'm like, I know you. You are on Gospel Tangents. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm not here in that capacity. And then when the LDS folk went away, I said, okay, now tell me, uh, you know, what's the real deal here? Let's let, Would you be interested in coming on my program? And, of course, he did. And then we did that fantastic interview, which we'll talk about with the members of his church. Then we had Becky uh, Tarback come on and talk about her mother's remarkable story of the song's design. And as I related earlier, Patrick McKay's phone call about her changed the trajectory of my channel. And so Becky uh, got so much great feedback, especially from uh, women, LDS, female LDS, uh, were very fascinated by your mother's story. And I noticed that we are starting to have cross-pollinization. I noticed in the comments that there are LDS folk talking to the Church of Jesus Christ folk. And boy, that's just awesome. And I even had, I mean, it's just amazing the stories that are happening. I got the, both of the volumes of the book, and I had some Christian friends of mine go through it. And they said, there's nothing in there that I would find objectionable. So it's a great hymn book. Becky, thanks for coming on. Then I had Adrian Larson, who talked about the Hebraic edition of the Book of Mormon. And a really cool dude. And I'm going to have him back on. Um, fascinating uh, story, and you know, he told us about the history of why the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints does currently not have a Hebrew uh, uh, version of the Book of Mormon. That's a fascinating history, and we delve into that. Uh, Thomas Murphy, anthropologist, um, fan of mine, watches all my episodes. Uh, I think he's bought a, quite a few of the books that I've recommended, I think, too. And uh, he is just uh, had a wonderful story about his adventures with the evangelicals, and uh, he was just like, it told, he never told the story before, um, the full story, and he wanted to tell it on my channel. And I just remember on Facebook, some family members, I'm assuming, because one was Murphy, saying, I didn't know you that happened to you when you were age nine, going for the altar call. And then so, and, 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 and Thomas told me that he hadn't told that people that story except for his wife. So that was the first time. And, uh, and then my next interview I have with him, he does some gr groundbreaking stuff about unpublished research he's doing, so stay tuned for that. Then I had the seven polygamists uh, with Ben Schaefer from Christ Church. And as I told people, you know, uh, I told people, I interviewed those people, and I don't think after you watching them, you wouldn't mind having any of them as a neighbor. Uh, they were great people. And I kept me on my toes because I didn't know who was going to be thrown in front of the camera next. And it really kind of challenged me. But uh, it was an awesome Saturday night spent with the polygamists, and I'll never forget that. Um, and then, of course, I had Rod Meldrum, who uh, people don't understand. I like Rod personally. I think he's a cool dude. 
And I thank him for coming on. He was able to give his perspective on the Heartland model. And it's important, like I said with my channel, that all voices be heard. I also just want to mention a couple of three book reviews that I've been getting a lot of uh, uh, feedback on. First of all, my very first one in Pentecost to read the Book of Mormon. That's my most watched, and I get a lot of positive feedback. Even now, I still get comments on that one. Um, and then my uh, uh, episode where I did an evangelical uh, reviews his Book of Mormons. I actually that was a suggestion made to me by somebody who posted on the YouTube saying, "Why don't you do a review of Book of Mormon?" And I thought, "Oh, I could review my Book Editions, Book of Mormon Editions." And so that's what I did. And I had somebody contact me, and I don't know where. I think it might have been on Reddit. Where he told me, he said, "I loved that episode so much, Steve, that I brought had I watched I had my son watch it with me." Um, after watching it, I told my son to come in. We got to watch this episode together. Uh, that means a lot to me when you're touching people on that level. And then I get a lot of feedback on the Godmakers video, the takedown of Ed Decker's uh, uh, disastrous book. It's a slander against the uh, people, our members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Uh, Half truths, exaggeration, written in a very conspiratorial way. Um, that is not the spirit of Christ in that book. I'm ashamed that our people from our side put that out, and I took it down, which was uh, I feel was perfectly uh, appropriate. Uh, so just a few things. I want to uh, ask my audience, um, first of all, thank you for everything. Uh, I'm so thankful for everybody and everything, all my guests, everything that uh, has been done, I'm thankful for. I just wanted to uh, mention to people to check out my website at uh, www.mormonbookreviews.com. I also want you to friend me at Facebook. I think it's S. Pinecker. Uh, you can find me there. Just message me ahead of time and say, hey, um, I'm subscribing via um, as, a, as a viewer of your program. I'm just, my Facebook profile is just for basically my channel. In general, I don't even have family or har hardly any friends on that Facebook page. Um, if you've been in touch with me in the past, some of you I've talked to on Reddit, some people have emailed me um, or on Facebook Messenger, uh, please feel free to reach out again because I've been so busy, sometimes it's hard for me to follow up. So if you haven't heard from me or if I haven't heard from you, uh, use this opportunity to reach out to me. And then I just want maybe feedback about what you guys think of the new format that we're going to be shooting for season two. Um, I'm very excited about it. And, um, you know, but we want to hear from my audience too. And just so you know, basically... Um, we did this episode to preview what uh, season two is going to look like, but we're going to have a lot more bells and whistles uh, probably once it's edited. And we've decided that we're going to debut um, season two of book reviews um, at the begin at the end of, or actually at the turn of next year. So look for new uh, episodes of season two of Mormon book reviews, book reviews, uh, sometime in January of 2022 folks can you believe it 2022 pretty wild so this journey i've been on has been very fulfilling uh it's been very awesome uh, my channel is growing greatly um and i also wanted to ask to one one last thing to the audience uh, if you're interested i'm i'm thinking of setting up a patreon if there's people that are interested in helping out the program the patreon would be to uh help us uh, upgrade our equipment um, maybe help fund some traveling so I can do interviews, uh, things like that. So if you're um, interested in, if, if you think you'd be interested in donating, just let me know. If I get feed, enough feedback from people to set up a Patreon page, I'll definitely uh, consider doing it. So this was kind of a behind the scenes episode where I kind of give you a little background on my guests. And by the way, I went through my list. If I missed any of you, I'm so sorry. And, 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 and if, if I did, I'll have you back on to make up for it. How's that? So either way, I want to just remind my audience to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification button to be informed when a new episode uh, comes out. And uh, just be well, everybody. Use common sense and we'll get through this whole thing together. And you have yourself a great day.